Really happy to host this session for you people, our precious guests. Uh, my name is Simone Bodini. I'm 41 years old and I'm based in Roma, Italy, and uh, not moving a lot through this COVID time, unfortunately. Otherwise, I'm in charge of uh, representing Sebusca, the brand that we're talking about today, worldwide. It get me very busy traveling around. And obviously, I spend a lot of time on a yearly ba on a on the based on a year. I spend a lot of time in Mexico. I would say quite some months a year, uh, helping out with the production and, uh, of course, enjoying the beautiful uh, Mexican weather and the beautiful Mexican people and the spirits that they produce. So, uh, introduction is done. Please refer to me as Simone, your new friend. And uh, please, uh, this is going to be the structure of today's session. Basically, we're going to have a virtual tour based on my experience and pictures that I personally took and knowledge in the village where we produce this amazing mezcal, Cebusca mezcal. And for some lucky of you that received some samples, we're going to have a tasting. And if you didn't receive the sample, don't worry. Remember what I tell what I will tell you today, and when you will have a tasting, you will know everything you need. But please make a cheer in my honor in that case. Okay, please remember you can put your questions in the QA box or here in the chat. I will make my best to read and to go through the questions at the end of the session. I will try to save a five minutes. And uh, yeah, time is really precious. So, and don't be shy, ask whatever you need, okay? Uh, no questions is stupid, answers, many times are very stupid, but that's my problem, not yours. So just ask whatever you want, I'm here for this. So with no further ado, let's jump on this virtual plane. Uh, please fasten your seatbelt and enjoy the security video. And when we land, I'm gonna take care of you. Here we are. How cool would be jumping on a plane and the security video instead of uh, instructions on how to fasten and unfasten the seatbelt. If a security video would be like this and then you'll be served on the scan, that would be a very interesting flight. Anyway, um, as you see our brand, uh, uh, the inspiration for our brand, Sebusca itself means uh, wanted. You remember these uh, old posters for the Western, from the Western mu movies, wanted. Uh, and basically, it's a tribute to the Adelitas that were uh, women hero, women fighter during the Mexican Revolution. So that's our inspirational. You will see that some good women is involved in the production of our beautiful mezcal. But let me take you out now. We arrived at the airport of Oaxaca, which is this southern state of Mexico, great state beautiful people, amazing culture, delicious food. And we are just landed in Oaxaca. Now we are in the city of Oaxaca. To get to our Palenque, we need to take a little travel. So imagine we all jumping in a pickup in an off-road car, Jeep or whatever, because we will need it. And through the way, in the highway, I have sometimes to share with you 
what is mezcal about? Because the majority of us have good confidence with uh, good confidence with um, with tequila, but not really with mezcal. So let's see a little bit about mezcal. So what is mezcal? First of all, uh, because you might be familiar that is this kind of smoky flavor tequila or no it's not a tequila oh well is that bottle with the warm oh yeah i saw it in this club in the 80s it was full of dust no that's not mezcal that's the that's not the mezcal that we're talking about today so mezcal comes from the ancient language spoken in mexico in many regions of mexico nahuatl and the mezcal word means cooked Agave. Agave is this plant that we use for making these beautiful Mexican spirits. And the word is mezcali. Metal, it's cali. That means cooked agave. So, uh, differently to tequila, which is one kind of mezcal, a specific kind of mezcal produced in one state, the state of Alisco, with one only variety of agave, the Blue Weber. Mezcal is produced mainly in the state of Oaxaca, but you can produce mezcal up to nine states, as you see here from the denomination de origin. Okay? The varieties of the agave that you can use is more than 30. So compared to tequila, we understand immediately, you have more varieties of raw ingredient and more, te and more terroir to grow this ingredient. So it's, it's an amazing journey that you can do in mezcal. Also because the varieties can be blended together. It's like the wine. You can drink only Chardonnay from this specific country, or you can drink all the grapes available coming from different countries, different terroirs. Sometimes you can blend them together. When you see a bottle of mezcal in a shop, if it's only reported mezcal on the label, leave it there. Do me a favor, don't buy it. If you see a warm and it's yellow, leave it there even more. Or maybe easy to clean the bar or, or your table. Uh, it's an industrial mezcal. Mezcal plus industrial, they don't work very well together. If you see artisanal or ancestral, that's great mezcal. In our case, Sebusca mezcal is an artisanal mezcal, which may, mainly means made by hands. And now I'm going to take you to our Palenque, which is the production place. It's not called distillery, it's called Palenque. It's a very rustic place. We will discover together what artisanal means. So we will see that basically the expertise, the knowledge, the know-how through the generation of the families producing this beautiful ancestral liquid is put in place. And how artisanal means involving the senses of the producers and no machinery at all, as it's supposed to be. So this is our Bienvenido. And this picture that I personally took is from the entrance of our Palenque. Remember, I told you we needed an off-road and really we needed. We are lost in the mountains of Oaxaca, one hour and a half far away from the city of Oaxaca itself. You have to do uh, 18 kilometers of off-road to arrive here. And as you see, you are in the middle of Mother Nature. Father sky, animals, but no mankind, no pavimented roads, is dirt roads, is eagles, rabbits, and a lot of agaves. Beautiful landscape. So, to where, waiting for us, there will be this, uh, this man, which is Rodolfo. Rodolfo is a third generation mescalero. Basically, he's been teached by his father that was teached by his father. It's a family thing. And uh, they have uh, origins, origins from the Zapotec people. It's a very ancient civilization. And they still speak some Zapotec. And we will learn one Zapotec word today. Don't worry. So when you see them speaking in Zapotec, it's something you will never understand because it's not the Spanish that they speak today that came from Spanish people. No, it's the ancient language. It sounds like a, a mixture of <laughs> Japanese and, and, and Russian. It's crazy, really crazy. But uh, so let me welcome you to San Juan de Rio, this little, little village with uh, something like 1,000, 1,500 inhabitants. As I showed you before, and as you see here, in the middle of nowhere, you see the sign up uh, 18 kilometers 
uh, that you have to go off road. It's a dirt road, very dangerous, a lot of turns. Better not drinking a lot while you're driving up there. The picture that you see in the middle is our Palenque. Is actually when now you have the bottle of Cebusca in front of you. Remember that comes from that Palenque, that little red house in the middle of nowhere in the state of Oaxaca. That's another picture of the street that leads to our Palenque. This is a beautiful, breathtaking view. This is Doña Mari. Doña Mari or Maria is the wife of Rodolfo, and this is our Adelita. She's an hero for us, and she helps out in the production of mezcal. We will see. This is Rodolfo Don Rodo, our maestro mezcalero, with the horse. This horse is called gunpowder. I'm going to explain you later on why we call him gunpowder. But this is a very helpful horse. This is a friendly face, Pedro, 70-something. Look at the shape of his body for his age. Is a great worker. Don't worry for this. Be on the chest is a fake tattoo. I put it uh, with Photoshop. No worries. And this is other pictures of the Palenque. Uh, the one in the middle, remember, that's the flower of the agave. I'm going to mention why the flower of the agave, or called Quixote, is important for us. And that's uh, the Palenque by night. And that end with that little, this thing that I have in my hand here, Kikara, which is a dried pumpkin cut in half. They don't have glasses or, you know, snifters. They use very rustic things. Is the thing that usually they use to drink mezcal out there. And the tube is the tube of the alambic, dropping drop by drop the mezcal. Once again, look at this picture, how beautiful it is. It's Rodolfo with his Batman t-shirt with the fake abs and Doña Mari, his wife, our mezcaleros. And this is uh, your host of today. When I was planting some agaves and... Uh, after uh, and chilling in the fields after a long day of working. It's a very hard work. Don't forget, really sunny, hot, and very heavy job. No machinery at all. This is a picture I adore. I hope that you understand the meaning of artisanal. Even from now, when you see that bottle, it comes from that little house I was mentioning you and you saw in the picture from this little family. Here you have Rodo and his wife, me, some friends, and his son, Rodolfo Jr., if you have bad memory in Mexico, it's very easy. Rodolfo and Rodolfo Jr., with his wife and his sons. The little kids, they will be the third generation of mezcaleros from now on. So every time you sip a mezcal from Cebusca, remember this picture is making this mezcal for you in that remote spot of Earth. So let's see how the mezcal is produced. Don't worry for this picture. It's really common to see kids working. And as you see here, I have a painting of a little lady, which is in the picture, Aranza, which is only eight years old. And she described all the process of making mezcal. That strange animal that looks like a dragon in the middle is a horse, as you see, caballo. So let's try to analyze the painting of Aranza, explaining us how to make a mezcal with some pictures and to show you what we do in Cebusca. So we start from the agave. Agave is this marvelous plant. Remember, agavos in Greek means admirable, marvelous. And Linneo, the explorer that discovered agaves for the first time in Central America, gave this name because these plants are unbelievable in terms of surviving and what they do and the age that they can get to. We use espadin. Remember, I told you we can use up to 30 varieties. Today we have espadin and madrequish. Those two are two different varieties. Espadin is a common name. It means little sword from Spanish because the leaves, they remind very, very small swords. This is the common name. The scientific name that you also find on the bottle is agave angustifolia. Oh, to be correct. But that's the scientific name. People there, Zapotec people, indigenous people, they don't go to the university. They call the agaves with remembrances of the shape or the color. So espadin to, you see, oh, wow, it's the shape of, it's an espadin. Okay, you understood. Once again, senses are always involved. So we cultivate the espadin wildly, so they grow wildly on the hills around the Palenque. And the process is basically, you remember the flower I told you, the chiote, that's very important because that means the agave is mature. Agave, it's an admirable plant, lives a long life and reproduce only once. When the agave starts to build that hugely high and tall flower, 
The agave is mature. After that is reproduction process. After the reproduction, the agave dies. So mescaleros, they know when they see the flower starting to grow, they know we need to cut the flower. As you see in the middle of the, in the picture in the middle, that's a flower that has been cut. Why? If you let the flower grow up to its uh, uh, maturity, all the energy, all the sugar, all the nutrients of the plants will go into the flower. The resulting will be a, an agave that you cannot use for making spirits because it has no sugar in it. Some flowers will leave it, as you saw in the picture, because you need to have a proper reproduction made by Mother Nature. Some flowers we cut because we need the agaves for making the mezcal. As you see, all the process is by end, by axis, by hammers, by uh, machetes. It's a very, very, very intense job, very fatiguing. That's why I'm wearing the hat in the picture because it's very hot and I have no hair, so I really need it. But trust me when I say this is a very heavy job. So here you see, uh, what is the process then? We take the agaves in the fields, we bring them to our palenque, to our facility, and then we have, and you see they are all shade. We remove all the, the, the leaf. Why? Because the leaf, they have a lot of wax and they produce a lot of bitter notes. We don't want them. We leave a little bit more than for tequila. Tequila, usually the agave is more shade. But here is crucial to have more herbal flavors and also the way we cook that we're gonna see now, it's important to have more leaf to protect the plant, to protect the art of the agave. The mescaleros, they will cut them in half or four pieces, depending on the size. Some piñas, some agaves are very small, some are massive monsters, weighing more than 200 kilos. So depending on the size, you have to cut them in two or four parts. Behind the man, you see the oven, you see that little mountain that is smoking in a hole, that's the oven. And now we really can understand why mezcal is smoky in taste. Okay, tequila is cooked with steam vapor, no fire. Mezcal is cooked with direct fire. How they do? They cut the agave, as you see here, they put some, some rocks on top of the fire. Imagine this, you have this hole and you put fire in the hole, like concrete fire from wood. Then you put some rocks from rivers that they will become very hot, quite red, extremely hot. When it's like that, they will put some fibers of the agaves on top of the rock to protect the agaves, because if you put them in contact with the rocks, they will get burns, not good. And on top of these fibers, they will put agaves. They will fill the hole, fill it with agaves, and they will put the dirt back and some cover to protect the agaves during the cooking. The results is gonna be like a little mountain of dirt smoking because underneath is smoke, is te the temperature is super hot. It's like slow barbecue, slow smoking the meat. This process will take up to seven days. Imagine for cooking tequila, usually you utilize some hours. This is for seven days. And once again, no machinery. How do they check? The mescalero will go there, will touch the mountain to see the temperature, will open a little hole and smell it to understand if the rust is done, if the rust is on point, because there is no timer, there is no machinery, no computer telling you. So they have to go there and check, maybe take a little piece of agave and taste it. Okay, it's cooked oh, or not, you know? It's, this is the meaning of artisanal. Eight days. In Cebusca, we will try in a short time, our espadine has a very small smokiness. We wanted this. Don't think that the more smoky, the better it is. It's opposite, the contrary. If you go in Oaxaca and you speak with mezcaleros or people that drink mezcal, they will tell you, I want to feel the smoke, but it has to be small. I want to feel the agave taste. I don't want to drink a mezcal that tastes like a pack of Marlboro. And that's correct. If it tastes of too much smoke, it's because the producer is hiding the uh, not very well properties of the liquid. So in Cebusca, we have this little hole underneath the uh, oven. As you see, it has some bricks, but usually it's open. We put the fire down there. In this way, the fire, and then we close it. So oxygen goes out, the temperature stays in. In this way, the heat make the oven upwards work but very small smoke go through. 
So it's something that we really desired for having a very, not heavily smoked mezcal. And also this way we save 50% of wood. So sustainability is very important nowadays. We save 50% of wood in this cooking process. Once the agave is cooked, after eight days or seven days, we go for the crushing. And now comes Mr. Gunpowder, this horse. It's called Gunpowder because he lives free. He's free in the fields around the, the, the facility. When we collect him to work, he doesn't want to work. So he starts to do like the Ferrari horse, like, you know, and start to kick. So you better be careful. As a good temper. So that's why Gunpowder, because he takes fire very easily. So the horse is needed because it's going to help us out to move that massive stone milling uh, miller that is very heavy, intense, super heavy. So as you see, mescaleros, they will put the agave cooked in the um, mill and they will start, as you see here, Doña Mari with the axe, never complain about her mole or quesadilla or this is what she's it's going to show you. So basically, they start to crush with axes and machetes to reduce the pieces. And then the horse, gunpowder, is going to push the stone. The stone is going to uh, crush the agave and uh, separating the juice, the sweet juice of a cooked agave, which is super sweet and delicious. Tastes like honey. If you ever tried agave syrup, that's the taste. Plus smokiness. Imagine this. It's delicious. But you need to separate the juice from the fibers. That's what they help of the horse can allow allowed us to do. As you see here, then they will collect with a shovel. And, and okay, this is Pedro that was tired of me taking pictures. Look at his face. And then you will put it in a open vat. The open vat is gonna be fibers, juice, plus water from the spring, from the mountains. This is gonna be our cocktail for making the fermentation. Look at this. This is when it starts, and this is what we do. We call it formulacion. La formulacion is basically this mescalero with this big steerer, steering, and sometimes also with the hands maneuvering the, the liquid, steering the, the, the pot, this uh, huge cocktail, and leave Mother Nature to do the job. It's not the yeast, which is this microorganism that produce from the, from the sugar, alcohol is not inoculated by man as usually in other spirits production it's wild it's in the environment so the yeast has to come from the air from mother nature from the surroundings so you just stir it and you wait for the magic to happen we are up in the mountains it's colder so it's lower and the process takes up to 17 to 18 days it's a long long fermentation spontaneous fermentation Okay, and once again, it's all by senses. There is no timer. There is no one telling you when it's ready. The mescalero will go there. We'll, try, we'll move the cup of the fibers. We'll see the bubbling. We'll, we'll try it by, by tasting. We'll put the heat to see if the bubbling is going on. We'll touch the liquid to see if the heat is still there. At some point, they will understand it's ready. And now, which you have a beer, as you see, a sparkling beer made from agave, which is around nine, 10 percent, you need to separate this alcohol and these flavors for making a mezcal. The way you do is by very rudimental alambics made of copper. Look at this. Looks like a very ancient fireplace in your grandmother's home. Look, the hole is where you put the wooden fire. So once again, they need to check by senses how much fire, when to stop the fire, how fast the mezcal is coming out. It's really an artisanal and crafted job based on experience going through generation. It's unbelievable. Book a trip to Oaxaca and go to check what they do. It's admirable and unbelievable. So here you see all the process that we load this beer plus the fibers for giving extra flavor in the tanks and that will start the fire. You see the fire is going on, lots of smoke. The liquid will boil, the vapor will go up, and where you see that kind of a swan neck made of copper is where the vapor goes through. The vapor is alcohol because boils before water, and they can collect it because they have a, a cooler into the water, spiral cooler, and they drop by drop the mezcal will come out. And this is a very intense job. Once again, there is no machinery to control this process. And talking about senses, because now we have mezcal, 
how can I how can they understand when to cut ads and tails and how to cut and how is the ABV of the spirit is by this way? Look at this. This is what they call venenciar. So they have one stick of bamboo, a carrizo, and one kikara, this little cup made of a pumpkin. They will suck the mezcal and put the thumb up the stick. It's like a straw. Imagine a straw. When you release the straw, the, the liquid will go back. And as you see in the picture, by checking with eyes, the bubbles, they can understand from the sides of the bubbles and from the length that they will stay in the ABV of the mezcal. And trust me, this might look like black magic to you. I went there with a chemist with machinery to check the ABD. We did the test by eye of the mescalero and the machine. Match, match, match every time. One or two, maybe ABD less or more, but match every time. This is artisanal. This is experience. This is being the... Um, you know, sharing the culture of making mezcal from centuries. It's an experience. Coming to tasting, and finally, if you are lucky enough to have a mezcalito sample with you, I'm going to start from the Cebusca Espadin, that is what we discussed now. Okay, what glass to use? Whatever glass you use is good. That's what the Mexicans will say. It's better the Copita, the Snifter, the Veladora, what glass? They will tell you, whatever glass, let's drink together. Let's celebrate life. So in this case, I have a veladora. This is a traditional glass that they have uh, for candles in churches. They empty the candle and they use it for mezcal. It's probably the most traditional glass. Another one is the jicara, this little pumpkin. Another one is the copita that we have for cebusca. But you can find in other materials like clay or glass Okay, but once again, if you have a snifter, if you have a glass for your water, whatever glass is a good glass for celebrating life together. Coming to the tasting, mezcal is something that you should sip with respect and kiss. Remember the shots in the clubs in the 80s? No, nah, that's gone. No, 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 that's not the right way. Shots are really needed when something is bad tasting. When something is good taste, you need to flavor it, to sip it slowly. And when something is produced with such a manner, such an effort that takes you, if you count the days for the cooking, the fermentation, the distillation, something like a month of intense work to produce the liquid. And years, nine years for the spadin, the agave, to mature, you have to respect it. So you will offend every Mexican by taking shots of mezcal. Well, depends. Sometimes they don't mind, but usually, yes. Imagine that mezcaleros offering a bottle of mezcal to their friends or uh, guests. They will open the bottle first and they will pour some mezcal on the ground. That's for giving some mezcal to the ancestors and to Mother Earth to say, thank you for giving me the knowledge. Thank you, Mother Earth for giving me agaves and the sun and being here alive, celebrating life with my friends. This is everything that I said to you is in the word teach be. What you see here, Britain, teach be. This is Zapotec dialect. Teach be means to health, to mother nature, to mother earth, to our ancestors, to peace. It's a very, very powerful and beautiful word. So teach be to you guys, teach be. Or you can say salute. Mm, I really needed a sip. I'm talking a lot. Anyway, if you are sipping with me, that some of you had some samples, I know. I hope you can find a smoky note, but it's subtle. It's like going underneath on your palate, on your mouth. And I'm producing a lot of saliva because it's really interacting with my mouth. You have this beautiful cooked garden notes, so some sweet notes, lots of herbal, a lot of herbal, and uh, fruity, and some kick of spices, like, uh, like a little pimenta, like a little pepper. But mostly, it's a very pleasant herbal flavor of the plant, of the cooked agave, but the smokiness is very small. Oh, I adore it. Ditch B, as you see, mother, uh, our mescaleros, Rodolfo and Doña Maria are sipping with you. They love to sip. They sip all day long. So let's talk about Madre Quiche. 
which is the uh, this very beautiful limited edition we have, is from another agave. It's not the espadine that is from the sword, little sword. This is agave Karvinsky, is the scientific name. As you see, it looks like a palm. It's an agave that grows in the desertic areas of Oaxaca. Oaxaca has a lot of different uh, places. Sometimes it's a tropical forest, and then you are in the middle of the desert driving with your car. So this plant is grow and is microendemic, grows only in the state of Oaxaca and some parts of Puebla, a very small part of another state. As you see, it's like a little palm, has this sticky, dense, woody stalk, and the, and the leaf, the foliage is like the one of a palm. The common name is quiche, and in this case, we use madre quiche. Madre quiche because it's larger, it's a large, Agave Karvinsky, so protect all the little agaves with their shadows when they grow. And also she can do cross-pollination. So by cross-pollination, she can grow different styles, different uh, kinds of agave. It's an, agave is an amazing plant. And quiche, madre quiche takes longer, like 12 to 15 years to mature. And it's mostly wild. It's a wild species. Every agave we used, we replanted two to protect the environment. And those agaves come from the deserts, the desertic zones of Miahuatlan, the Porfirio Diaz, and Ecutla. I'm sorry for the names, but these are <laughs> names from Oaxaca. As you see, the piña is quite different. As you see here, it's like a long stick. It's like different shape, totally a different shape. The flavor will be different as well. So what we do, we have this beautiful palenque, it's a second palenque that we have, it's in front of the cemetery. Mexicans, they love cemeteries, they have a different concept on that. And trust me, is we call it the, 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 the almas, palenque de los maestros, which means palenque of the masters, because all the mescaleros from San Juan de Rio, which is a super tiny village, they rest there. So what we do, we, this time we cook in direct contact with fire because we want more smokiness. And... Uh, it's, uh, everything is still artisanal as before. So end cut. all the processes are mostly more or less the same, but this time we cook in direct contact with the fire because we want extra smokiness for this different type of agave. It's like making a Chardonnay, you want to use the stainless steel, making a beautiful Cabernet, you might want to use the barrique. Different style according to the taste of the raw ingredient. Look at these pictures, those are amazing. This is the oven just before we put the agaves. So tasting notes, and so let me have another glass here of Madre Quiche. I'm pouring my glasses in front of you so you see that everything is going live, just for you, friends. And once again, Ditch Bay. Mm. And if you're tasting with me, this is exploding in your mouth now. It's amazing. More smokiness than the one before, really more smokiness, intense, really intense. Remember, when you taste something, everything comes from the terroir, so the environment where the ingredient is grown, and from the ingredient, of course. Remember, I told you, this is a different shape. It's like a palm with a sticky, dense, woody stone. So I already under, and grows in desertic zones. So for sure, less sugars less water. So the taste will be, of course, more mineral. The taste will probably have more tannins from the woody stalk. So more bitterness in the end and an overall viscous sensation. And this is exactly what I find here. This is incredibly herbal in a very positive way. We have a lot of citric notes like orange peel or citrix or, ci or lemons. We have a very interesting spicy kick. I find personally, this is really personal, some dark chocolate notes as well. And it's rich, it's coating my mouth, it's viscous, but the finish is dry, bitter dry, which is traditional from Karvinsky's mezcales. I adore it, ditch bed. And this is it, my good friends. So. Now we have the five five last minutes for the webinar. I want to thank the Summit of Americas for giving us this spot and my colleagues for organizing. Now that we have these five minutes, I will finish my mescalito with you. I hope you enjoyed the session. Please 
free, feel free, as my colleague Larissa is reminding you, to ask something if you want to comment, if you appreciated the, the virtual travel, please feel free to write us something. Because, you know, when there is no comments or questions, two meanings, basically. You did a great job or a very bad one. I hope I did a good job with you guys. And uh, here we are, ready for reading your comments. Even if you want to say something about the liquids you tried or if you're curious to try, which one did you like the most, the Espadin or the Madre Quiche? If you have any curiosities or questions, please feel free. Ditch Ben. And don't be shy because nobody see your face. So if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to put them in. So I have Lucio writing me. Nice to meet you. Lucio is my pleasure. Trust me. Hello from Miami. Hello there, Miami. Missing traveling a lot, people. UK. Hi, UK. Miami, New York. Nice. Florida. Sorry. Hello from Surrey. Sorry, I don't know where it is. I will be honest. Oh, David, my good friend. Uh, David Cabral from Antigua and Barbuda. Okay, let's see. So I have some questions here. Very engaging sessions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alex, for your time. Time is so precious. We are really grateful for you joining us and sharing us this ditch, virtual ditch bay time. That was a great job. I love your passion and can't wait to try for real. Thank you, Sarah. I hope as well that we can try maybe together. We can meet up. I really hate this kind of presenting. I'm a man of people and I like to be surrounded by friends. And especially with a glass of mezcal, the stories are never ending and very interesting. Thank you, Ro. Very good. Thank you so much. Ro, I was curious to know where are you from exactly? Veronica, thank you. Teach me. Can we mix Madre Quiche? Nice question. Remember, cocktails with mezcal are more than welcome. No matter it's a classic twist on a margarita or just mezcal and Coca-Cola. It's up to your taste. Usually a good cocktail that I recommend is the mezcal Negroni, especially for Madre Quiche, which is a little bit bitter. Mezcal Negroni, so Campari, vermouth, sweet vermouth, and instead of the gin Madre Quiche with these bitter uh, notes, or even the espadin, it's going to be a little bit lighter. It's going to be a very intense, smoky Negroni. Beautiful. Or for your margaritas. But remember, when you drink it, make a ditch bay in my honor. Eh? It's going to bring me a lot of good luck. Uh, great presentation. Uh, thank you. you. Don't make me red, please. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, Laura. Ah, ci abbiamo pure un paesano, Adriano Capurro da Genova. Grazie Adriano, grazie mille. Spero di incontrarti se stiamo nello stesso pa paese. I was replying to my paesano. Ah, it's south of London. Thank you, Ro. I hope I can see you soon. I miss the UK a lot. Joe, thank you. Whenever you want, guys, you're more than free to follow me on Instagram. I'm quite active out there, Simone Bodini. Like my name, 1980, which is my age. Very easy. Simone Bodini, 1980. And we can stay in contact. And I'm very open to all your questions or curiosities. So if I come around where you're staying, we can go out for a drink for sure. Mescal Negroni, definitely. It's a very good choice. I recommend. Thank you, Rodrigo. Chris, thank you. Yeah, I love afternoon tasting. Me too, man. Well, well I, I think it's the last minute, so let me tell you this. When I'm in Oaxaca, on a daily basis, I drink something like three bottles of mezcal every day. And it's great. And no hangovers. When you drink pure stuff made with love, time for informative session. Is more educational mezcal quality is needed for you to be free. We can arrange, look for sure, coordinate with my colleagues. I'm always very happy to talk about our beautiful mezcal. Guys, I think uh, the session will be cut up soon. So thank you once again. Thank you all. Teach Be. It was amazing. Thank you. Yeah, Alex, I agree with you. It's a, it's a city that you have to put in your list. Oaxaca, when this world reopens, 
book a plane to Waka. And if you go, let me know. I will fix up something for you, some surprises for you. And of course, to visit our Palenka of Sebuska. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, it's been a pleasure. <sighs> I think we did it. To the last drop. Okay, it's ending in eight seconds. It's, it's kind of scary. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one.